welcome to all of you that are with us in person, on Zoom, or on Facebook Live. Those of you who are in person, please take a moment to ensure that your cell phones are in silence mode. Thank you. We begin our Wednesday service with a pre-service meditation. So I invite you to get still. I like to put my feet on the ground flat and I like to put my back against the chair. I close my eyes and I breathe in God and I breathe out all that no longer serves me. As I chant, God is the love that I am. So I invite you to chant, God is the love that I am to yourself. And I'll bring you out after 10 minutes. Enjoy. And by the way, if your mind wanders, which it will, just notice it gently without judgment and bring your attention back to your breath, breathing in and breathing out and enjoy this 10 minutes.
As the meditation comes to a close, please bring your awareness back into your surroundings, feel into your bodies, and as you're ready, please open your eyes. Okay. Welcome to all of, the, all of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. So glad you're here with us virtually or in person. Let's begin with the, our opening chant, God is in this place. Hi, Tina. <laughs> is in this place, and wherever you are, God is. Please join me in prayer. <sighs> As I recognize God, everywhere present, all-knowing, all-powerful, God, the good of which there is no opposite, there is nothing equal, there is nothing equal. God is love, God is abundance, God is all that is good, and there is nothing that can separate me from my creator. I am an emanation of the divine. I know this about myself, and I know this for each one of you, every being on Zoom, Facebook Live, in person, all over the world, just everybody, we are all one, and we are all emanations of the divine. And I speak my word on this lovely Wednesday evening, knowing that God is just, he's guiding this service. God is divinely guiding this service, and I absolutely know that our lovely, wonderful practitioner, Daryl Gurney, is guided by God, and his words are of God's, and we are so blessed to have him here tonight. And I am so, we are so blessed also to have our wonderful song and music people, Sam and Tina, and we are blessed by our volunteers and our staff and Adam on Sound and Lights. We are blessed to have you participating as participants by um, just observing us in this service. We are all blessed, and this service is perfect, whole, and complete. And with a grateful heart, I release my word into the law of mind, knowing that God says yes to us in this beautiful service. And so it is, and together we say, amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.
We've only just begun to live White lace and promises A kiss for luck and we're on our way Before the rising sun to us watching the signs along the way talking it over just the two of us working together day to day together and when the evening comes we smile so much of life ahead we'll find a place where there is room to grow and yes we've just begun signs along the way talking it over just the two of us working together day to day together together and when the evening we smile so much of life ahead we'll find a place where there's room to grow and yes we've just begun just be gone. Good evening. Get this off. <clears throat> so I have something to say about that, Tina. First off, let's have it, uh, some more applause here for our wonderful soloist. And I don't know if that was planned but uh, ahead of time, but it's perfect given what I'm going to be speaking about tonight. I actually want to look up the lyrics later and see how it aligns with this. But first off, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for everyone being in the sanctuary. Thanks for coming. Thanks for everyone on Zoom and Facebook. Please just join in like you're right here uh, with us. And uh, I'm happy to be here with you this evening. I'm so grateful that uh, Reverend Sidney asked me to step in for her while she's on vacation. And I'd like to speak tonight about starting. We've only just begun. <clears throat> and specifically, I'd like to uh, speak about the incredible lightness of starting. So today, after two years almost to the day that the world shifted in the biggest way that many of us have ever known in our lifetimes, I think the idea of starting is something worth exploring, yeah? See, I, I believe the date was actually March 13th of 2020, and I, I remember it well because my wife and I had just flown up to Oakland to shoot an IBM commercial. And I remember a couple days before we left uh, saying, hey, babe, all the hotels in the city seem really inexpensive right now. Ah, uh, wonder why. Why don't we just stay for the weekend? And uh, we did, and just then the world closed down. 
So we were in San Francisco. There were no cars on the street. Nobody was walking. I have pictures of San Francisco that look like this old movie with Charlton Heston called Omega Man, where there's just nothing existing. And <clears throat> so we, you know, life simply stopped and we just stayed in our room for a couple days. I did nothing. My wife worked endless hours on her computer because she's in HR and she had to virtually turn remote all the operations of a 400 person company back here in LA virtually over the weekend. And we just prayed that our flight would still take us home on Sunday. And I believe we were actually the last flight out of San Francisco to LA for many, many, many months. So the US began shutting down, holding up, um, you know, learning how to manage ourselves and our lives in whole new ways, right? And for these past two years, tell me if I'm telling you something you haven't heard, but many of us have referred nostalgically to those pre-COVID times as normal, and we pined for when things would return to normal. Yeah? Now, for any who may have missed the memo, we're not going back to normal. So there will be no going back to the way things were. Now, the way things were was a box office hit, right? And it's kind of a nostalgic, whimsical notion, but it's maybe not the path to enlightenment. But I say not going back to normal is good news. For whatever reason, think about it, for whatever reason in God's infinite creativity, would we ever want to go back to the way things were? Think about that. You know, and think about it honestly now, for those of us who've used this word, I'm going to use it, those of us have used the gift of these last couple years of the pandemic to take stock and review where we were in our lives then, many of us might admit that it wasn't even normal then, if you look back. You know, it was just life. It was, you know, moving at a fast and furious pace. You know, we were just all kind of hanging on, doing the best we could to keep up with the Facebook Joneses, right? Running and running and running towards our good. So I spoke here on a Wednesday at the end of this past August about the ability to take a new view of our past, that I spell out in my new book, The Back 40. And in that view, basically, if we can contort our minds, and hey, it's not easy, right? But spiritual growth isn't always easy. But if we can bend our minds to find the blessings of any and all situations and events that have occurred in our lives, and then dig out from those events and circumstances exactly how and in what ways they are pointing us to becoming more of ourselves, then we're freed up from being victims to anything. And a life of being a victim to nothing is a radical kind of life, yeah? So and when I say become more of ourselves, what I mean is this. What if each of us came onto the planet to be something and to do something individually unique? Now, when I say individually, I mean undivided from the whole of God, but unique in our particular expression of it. Just what if all of the events and circumstances in our lives, and the ones I'm talking about, by the way, are the yucky, you know, crummy ones. But what if all of them were by design to form us into who we came here to be and what we came here to do? You know, there's one school of thinking that stuff happens to us and we grow because it happened to us and we, you know, grow. I'm talking about a whole other turn on this. I'm talking about like, what if we actually had a hand in it as part of our growth? 
like not victims to it? What if our life was simply a laboratory of R&D? Research and development for who we came here to be and what we came here to do. You know, what if life is just a continual requalification and refinement process for that? And that doesn't take away the stuff that's occurred in our lives, but it sure puts it in a much funner light and occurs as a present versus a lot of poop. Yeah? Perhaps the last couple years was a gift. Perhaps we were gifted with the pause to take personal inventory. You know, as, t as difficult as it was, perhaps we were gifted in that through the unfortunate loss of many loved ones, we now look at life differently. We have a different appreciation of life. And maybe we even have some new resolves and directions that we want to take. You know, about eight months ago, the economy showed these resolves in what's been called the Great Resignation. There, there's been anywhere from four to five million people leaving their jobs for the last eight months. That's, that's nuts, right? That's never happened before. Now, some have left to move on to things that really matter to them now. You know, some have left to find what I call better work marriages where they're appreciated, you know, or taken care of. And some people have left because now they can actually afford to. You know, a lot of people made a lot of money over the last couple years. We don't want to make that wrong. People are now able to retire. Now, here's the thing. If you'll remember, Jesus said, I have come that ye may have life and that ye may have it more abundantly. Who's the ye? Thank you. Yeah, the ye is us, right? Now, think about this. Do we believe that this power called COVID-19 came along and, oops, the Christ presence wasn't on the job? Sorry, I took a potty break. And... All of a sudden, darn, we've got some experience now that wasn't what God had in mind. You know, that doesn't really fit with our spiritual mind, science of mind principles. Ernest Holmes says, we live in a spiritual universe. God is in, through, around, and for us. And that's not just some of the time, that's all of the time. So if we then take on that in some contrary way to race consciousness thinking, the last couple years have actually been geared so that we may have life and have it more abundantly, then what is there to do? What there is to do is start. To start living that life blessed by the new insights and the new appreciation that we've gained through this two-year laboratory. To start living from that new awareness now, absent of any regret from losing the way things were. In my book, The Back 40, I propose that our life is a series of laboratories of becoming. Now, what does that mean? It means that whatever we've been through, no matter how seemingly crummy or even traumatic it may have been, or maybe whatever we're even going through right now as seemingly crummy and traumatic as it may be, that it's all simply a laboratory for evolving into and bringing forth who we actually came on the planet to be, what we actually came here to do. I mean, if you think about it, we don't pop out into the world with a scripted, you know, and double-spaced plan, right, for our purpose, do we? I mean, not consciously. But I do propose that we are in cahoots. I love that word, cahoots. But we're in cahoots on the spiritual plane with infinite intelligence. 
And we are privy in the planning on both a spiritual and unconscious level on exactly the experiences that we need to have so as to form us into the unique expression of the one life of God that we came to represent. So, what do some of those life laboratories look like? It looks like you picking your first husband or your first wife. It looks like being born into the family and the culture that you were raised in. You know, it looks like you having that horrible or even traumatic thing happen to you years ago. You know, it looks like that business failure or the health issues or even the addiction that you've dealt with. All of those things that we believe coulda, woulda, shoulda been different, if looked at from the perspective as a laboratory for the fulfillment of our divine self, what if they were perfect and exactly what needed to happen for you, not to you, to start becoming who you came here to be and doing what you came here to do? You know, one of my favorite quotes, actually, out of the book is right here on the back. And it says, you are never who you are or who you've been. You are who you're becoming. So think about that. You're never who you are or who you've been. You are who you're becoming. And here's how this all funnels down to the topic of tonight's talk, the incredible lightness of starting. The time is always now to start becoming. We've only just begun. We're not going back. We're beginning. Do you see how perfect? How perfect. Literally, I was listening to the lyrics, and it's like, okay, thank you. So how about we put aside the ideas of re? You know, renewal, reinvention, redemption, resurrection. You know, let's put aside the idea that there's anything worthwhile to go back to. Hi, I'm Daryl Gurney. I'm a recovering rear. Right? Let's start now. And rather than renew, let's take on a practice, a constant practice of new. Right now. You know, rather than reinvent ourselves, let's invent right now. You know, rather than seek redemption, let's just simply rise. Let's just simply deem ourselves and our life is worthy and worthwhile right now. We can do that. We can deem ourselves worthy right now. And rather than pray for resurrection, let's simply rise into life, living it more abundantly right now. Ernest Holmes said, never limit your view of life by any past experience. And when we hold on to the way it used to be, the way we were or some concepts of what was normal at any point in our life and we try to climb back to it, you know, we're, we're limiting our life. And our life is to move forward. So when we look back, let's only do so in order to discern and marvel at how our creative collaboration with the presence of God in our lives has given us the opportunity to become the fullest expression of the unique self we came to be. And you know, it's incredibly light when there's nothing at all from the past, nothing at all that's ever happened to you, and nothing even going on right now at this time in your life that in any way limits you from becoming. You know, all that weight, all that ballast is just dropped, and then we have the possibility to actually fly. A final quote from Ernest Holmes, he says, it's been said that we can know God only so far as we can become God. And I would venture to say that if we're interested in actually knowing God, then our never-ending way 
to wake up each day is with the question, how do I start becoming more God today? And that is a mountain that we never get to the top of. But isn't it wonderful to be constantly starting our climb each day in this kind of rarefied mountaintop consciousness? So if you would, please take a moment and close your eyes and bring to mind the most yucky, mucky, crummy circumstances that you've ever been through. Or you might even be going through right now. And just bring that into this sacred space. And with those challenging times and seemingly unfortunate events and conditions in mind, let's remember the words of Jesus the Christ. I have come that ye may have life and may have it more abundantly. And if we choose to believe that God is always here, always now, and always in cahoots with our highest selves, and that all there is is God, take a moment now to wrap all of those conditions, those circumstances and seemingly unfortunate events inside of that ever-present, all-encompassing God. If it's impossible for anything to exist outside of the oneness of God, what was the gift of that event or circumstance? In what ways did it form you into more of who you came here to be? How did or could you become more loving out of it? How did or could you become more giving out of it? How could or did you become more open and available out of it? How did or could you become more God out of it? What is your bigger self-expression as a unique expression of God on the planet that came out of it? And now taking this into prayer, we just speak a word right now to know the presence of God as our life, every part of our life, that there is no separation, that we are individuals undivided from the whole that God is. And all that's possible and all that's given by God is ours right here and right now. And so I speak a word to know that each of us right here and right now are privy to all that God has, that all that God is. And our health, in our careers, in our relationships, that we are in cahoots with this presence for more life and having it more abundantly. And that there is never a thing that has ever happened nor a thing that could happen that in any way limits us from becoming more and more God, a unique and individual expression of God here to be who we came here to be and do what we came here to do. And I just speak a word to know that God is at the center of all the situations for which we set our intentions and that good is being revealed. Only good, only God. We've only just begun. And together, we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. 
I give thanks for this. I give thanks for this congregation. I give thanks for Zoom and Facebook. I give thanks for the infinite messaging that these last couple years have brought about for more God, more good to be transmitted everywhere in, as, and through our lives. For this and so much more, I give thanks. I release this word into the law, calling it all good, starting now, becoming more and more God. And so it is. And so we are. Amen. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle with no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my Okay, so if we could uh, have our offering now, and for those online, uh, you'll see on your screen right now where you can give. You can also text give uh, to the number 818-457-3419, and uh, if everyone here could please just hold your gift up to your heart and repeat after me. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to be multiplied abundantly. for Tina, our soloist. So uh, some thank yous. I uh, want to uh, thank uh, our practitioner holding vigil tonight, which was Liz Racy, and for our Facebook live support, Dean Reagan, Zoom support, Alma Alvarez, Lynn Romanowski, and Ray Reagan, 
And in the sanctuary, we want to thank Adam Keishan, Handling Lights and Sound, our usher, Terry Prince and Deborah Lockett, uh, sanctuary media team, Doreen Remo, Brenda Jordan, and Blair Thompson, our wonderful soloist, Tina Meeks, our musical director and pianist, Sam Krieger, thank you. And our pulpit support, Gail Pelot. Come on back up. Thanks to all of us who've joined both in the sanctuary and virtually as well. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Dale. Thank you, Daryl. It was wonderful hearing you. Thank you. Hello, I have some announcements. Number one announcement, Daryl will be signing and selling his book after the service on the patio. The book is, may I put it up? Okay, I want to, the back 40. Looks really good. Anyway. <laughs> it's okay, we have time to read. Okay, announcements for tonight. For all the ways you can make donations to our church, go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with the practitioner is available after the service on Zoom or in person. On person, in person, if you'd like to have a prayer, just come to the front and one of us, our practitioners will be there to pray with you. If you're on Facebook, get off of Facebook, go on to Zoom, and a, a practitioner will pray with you on Zoom. So enjoy the prayer. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sydney Steen is next week. The meditation is at 6.50 p.m. and the service is at 7 p.m. Join Reverend Sydney next week as she and her spiritual big sister, retired CSL minister, Reverend Diane Borkowski, Borkowski, present Stump the Ministers. Join in the fun as you, the congregation, try to stymie, stupefy, and stump both these wisdom teachers in a game of knowledge and random chaos. Sure to have you laughing and learning. But please, I was with all of our uh, services, no wagering, well, maybe a little, just a little bit of wagering during the lighting, lightning round. <laughs> Living the Course of Miracles is on Zoom. This wonderful class, facilitated by practitioner Jeannie Laporte, meets tomorrow night, Thursday night, St. Patty's Day, March 17th, from 7.15 to 9.15 on Zoom. And the link for Zoom is um, on the website, nhcrs-org. Okay, feeding the homeless. Our love and kindness ministry will be feeding the homeless this Sunday at 12.30 p.m. To support this ministry, please go to our website, nhcrs.org. Volunteers and donations are always welcome. There's a new class happening. Yay. Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life with Reverend Sidney Steen. This five-week class starts Tuesday, March 22nd, in person and on Zoom. Don't miss out on this brand new exciting class. You will learn how to apply science of mind principles, practices, and methods to transform your life in the areas of relationships, prosperity, and health. What could be better than that, really? What could be better than that? It's amazing. I'm going to be joining, and I, I just think I hope all of you join us because it's going to be a great class. Everyone is welcome. Sign up on our website. The cost is $170. That's 170 The class counts towards practitioner training. So if you're thinking about becoming a practitioner, this will count towards your training. So on April 15th, we will have a Good Friday service followed by a fundraising dinner. W-W-J-E, what would Jesus eat? <laughs> a delicious four-course Middle Eastern dinner. That's what he would eat. Go figure. Entertainment by Tina Meeks. Woohoo! This will be a fun night. Tickets for the dinner will be available on our website this Friday, March 18th. So if you want to go on our website on March 18th, you'll be able to sign up and... Um, for the dinner, fundraising dinner. So we have vir Zoom virtual patio before and after the Sunday and Wednesday services. We also have Zoom meditation every Monday through Saturday from 7.55 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. Remember that 
our website, nhcrs.org org is where you go to find all the Zoom links and more information about all of our events and to sign up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Thank you. Let's join in singing with Tina one more time. Bless it always. stand in blessed always we have always been blessed whether we knew it in the moment or not and I just speak a word to know that tonight we were blessed this is a place of God and God is here in the house and God is everywhere all the time and so I just speak a word for knowing that we leave from here with a new perspective on the perfection of life with a new beginning. We've only just begun. And that's starting to become more and more God. Now, in an hour, and when we get up in the morning, is all there is for us to do, to start. So I give thanks. For this evening, I give thanks for all who took part in this evening. I give thanks for all that emanates out of this evening in terms of ahas and insights and awareness. And just give thanks for this and so much more. Simply saying, and so it is and so we are. Amen. So let's join together in song one more time. Amen. Do it again. <laughs>